to that note now this new one is the consequence of the one we've just been through 
and some bound to be the unavoidable consequence of you. Now there's so many people who can talk and talk and talk and just say nothing, or nearly nothing. I have just a bother knowing I've come to nothing, nearly nothing. So I come back to my first note, as I must come back to you. I will pour into that one note all the love I feel for you. Anyone who wants the whole show, Ray, me, Faso, La, Si, Do, he will find himself with no show. Better play the note you know. consequence of the one we've just been through as I'm bound to be the unavoidable consequence of you now there's so many people who can talk and talk and talk and just say nothing or nearly nothing I have used up all the skill I know and at the end I've come to nothing or nearly nothing so I come back to my first note as I must come back to you, I will pour into that one note all the love I feel for you. Anyone who wants the whole show, re mi fa so la si do, he will find himself with a no show. Better play the note you know. Thank you. Really brings enjoyment 
work if you can get it and you can get it if you try strolling with that one guy sighing sigh after sigh nice work if you can get
of quiet stars quiet chords from my guitar floating on the silence that surrounds us quiet thoughts and quiet dreams quiet walks by quiet streams and the window looking on the mountains and the sea how lovely this is where I want to be here with you so close to me until the final flicker of life's amber I who was lost and lonely believing life was only a bitter tragic joke I found with you the meaning of existence oh my love and quiet stars quiet chords from my guitar 
floating on the silence that surrounds us. Quiet thoughts and quiet dreams, quiet walks by quiet streams, and the window looking on the mountains and the sea. How lovely! This is where I want to be. Here with you, so close to me, until the final flicker of life's amber. I, who was lost and lonely, believing life was only a bitter, tragic joke, have found with you. Existence, oh my love. Te amo. Gracias.
Good evening. There we go. Welcome to Roan State Community College and to the commencement for Roan State for 2013. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask you to please continue to stand and gentlemen, please remove your hats for the posting of our national and state flags as well as the playing of our national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? If you'll remain standing, please, we, we need to go ahead and, and have the actual posting, so Color Guard, please post the colors. We're very grateful for Sergeant York's own Army JROTC Dragon Battalion from the York Institute in Jamestown for posting our national and state colors this evening. If you'll please retire the colors. As you remain standing in a moment for our invocation, I would also like to thank Professor Hel Harold Nagy and the Roan State Jazz Band, who was accompanied by Dr. Joel Greenlee, for their musical performances tonight. Would you join me in thanking them? <laughs> Dr. Larry Bolden will deliver our invocation this evening. Dr. Bolden. And gentlemen, if you will remove your hats once again, please. Would you bow with me? Our almighty and merciful God, in whom we live and move and have our very being, we come to you with praise and thanksgiving for the blessings of this day and of this occasion. We rejoice with these graduates and their families and pray your continued blessings upon them as they commence a new chapter in their lives. 
We pray that the knowledge they have gained will replace fear and mistrust. Give them confidence and competence in their chosen fields and that a broader perspective of tolerance and understanding will result from their time spent here. As they take up new challenges, we pray that they will make us proud as they enjoy good and productive lives. Bless this school, its faculty and staff and leadership that we all may continue to work together to deliver an education of quality and good reputation, and may the desire to continue to learn and serve characterize all who partake of their own state experience. Grant us grace and forgiveness, temperance and compassion, patience and kindness, goodness and courage of conviction. Direct us in all our ways and keep us safe and secure in the knowledge of your everlasting love. We humbly pray. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Bolin. You may be seated. In 1971, this institution was created by the Tennessee legislature, and it was named after the second governor of the state of Tennessee, Mr. Archibald Roan. Prior to his election, Governor Roan made the Delaware River crossing with George Washington in 1776, and he was also present at the surrender of Cornwallis at Yorktown. He was a member of the Tennessee State Constitutional Convention in 1796, and he was elected as governor of Tennessee in 1801, serving until 1803. During his term as governor, he served as trustee of Tennessee's first three colleges, Blunt College, now the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, Greenville College, and Washington College. And so it is very fitting that Roan State Community College is named after him. And again, on behalf of the faculty, staff, and our students, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to Roan State Community College for our commencement ceremony for 2013. We so appreciate you joining us this evening. Professor Jennifer Tucker is the mace bearer tonight and led the faculty into the hall with our college mace. Professor Tucker begins her post-retirement at the end of this semester. In addition, Dr. Larry Bolden, who provided our invocation, and Dr. Tressa Murphy will also begin their post-retirement at the end of this semester. Roan State faculty ending their post-retirement or retiring from the college at the end of this semester include Dr. Pat Bailey, Dr. Pat Brown, Professor Bill Murray, Professor Sharon Cordell, and Professor Susan Seaton. Also, Professor Becky, Professor Becky Andrews ended her post-retirement at the end of the fall semester 2012. With the faculty members entering post-retirement, retiring, or ending their post-retirement, please stand at this time. Would you join me in thanking these colleagues for their service to Run State? And at this time, I would like to ask us to please pause for a moment of silence to remember two of Roan State's beloved faculty members whom we lost this year, Dr. John Thomas and Dr. Mike Curran. We extend our sincerest condolences to their family, their friends, and their peers. They will continue to be with us in the memories that we cherish. Will you join me now in a moment of silence? Thank you. Tonight we gather to celebrate and to pay tribute to over 1,000, yes, 1,000 Roan State graduates who have reached a major milestone in their lives. And I offer to each of you a commendation and congratulations for achieving the degree or certificate that you have worked so hard to earn. We are so pleased to honor you as our graduating class of 2013, and we welcome you tonight into Roan State's alumni ranks. 
While we consider each of you our special guest, there are certain individuals who join us tonight that are worthy of special recognition. Would you please stand as I introduce you? First of all, Mrs. Gay Jolly. I will have much more to say about Mrs. Jolly since she will be delivering the commencement address in just a few moments. Ms. Michelle Edwards, who is the recipient of the 2012-2013 President's Award, also a member of the graduating class. Michelle's parents, Michael and Linda, join us in the visitor section with her sister, Shelley. Thank you for being here. Also, as a point of personal privilege, you may be seated. I would like to uh, thank my wife, Cindy, for being here tonight. I won't make her stand or I'll be in trouble. And also seated with her is our Vice President of Workforce and Enrollment Management, Teresa Duncan. Guests also from Roan State Community's College Class of 1983 joined us in a reception this evening. Dr. Myra P. V. House, who is seated on the stage, Class of 1983, as well as Wayne Carpenter and his wife, Sybil. And we appreciated getting to celebrate with you and getting reacquainted uh, with the Carpenters. Would you please join me in welcoming all of, welcoming all of our special guests? I would also like to recognize the other platform guests at this time, and I would ask them to please stand as I call their names. On your right, Mrs. Catherine Rhodes, the Interim Vice President for Student Learning at Roan State. On the first row from your left, Mrs. Melinda Hillman, Vice President for Institutional Advancement and Community Relations. Professor Pat Worth, the Faculty Senate President. Dr. Michael Lehman, Dean of Allied Health Sciences. Dr. Patricia Jenkins, Dean of Nursing. On the second row from your left, Dr. Myra Peavy House, Dean of Humanities. Dr. Larry Bolden, Dean of Mathematics and Sciences. And Dr. Diane Ward, Dean of Social Science, Business and Education. Would you join me in welcoming them? Again, tonight's commencement speaker is Mrs. Gay Jolly. Gay is the president and Chief Administrative Officer for Roan Medical Center. She is an Oak Ridge High School graduate with a bachelor's degree in medical technology and a master's of public health from the University of Tennessee. Gay began her professional career as a medical technologist and has been with Covenant for almost 30 years. She has a variety of experiences, including laboratory management, reimbursement and budgeting, capital acquisitions, contracting, project management, and process redesign. She had served as Vice President of Supply Chain Management before accepting the challenge of building and relocating Roan Medical Center in May of 2012. She is a fellow in the American College of Healthcare Executives as well as a member of the Harriman Rotary Club. And it is my honor tonight to welcome her to the stage, would you join me in welcoming Gay Jolly. Good evening. Thank you, President Whaley. It's so great to see such smiling, bright faces. I know you're all very excited. I'm quite honored by this invitation to speak here at your commencement exercise. I'm gonna lower this just a little bit, make it a little bit easier. First of all, let me congratulate all of you. I'm sure that you've all worked very hard to be at this point in your careers. And I realize that from your perspective, I'm only adding minutes to um, what's between you and receiving that piece of paper that you've worked so diligently for. So I've attempted to choose my words very carefully tonight. As I began thinking about possible topics for this speech, I was somewhat at a loss. I've never been asked to speak at a commencement exercise before. First thing I realized is that there's probably quite an age difference between me and most of you. As a matter of fact, I'm probably the age of a lot of your parents. So I'm not sure if you've reached the age where you think your parents are wise or whether you still think they might be stupid. But regardless, what might I say that would be meaningful and memorable and more importantly wouldn't really sound like something your mom would say to you? First of all, I began, oh, I thought this was so clever, by researching the internet. 
So I Googled famous graduation speeches for inspiration. Those on the top 100 list had been given by many famous people from a myriad of backgrounds that included Denzel Washington, he was number 91, Dr. Oz, number 87, Arnold Schwarzenegger was number 67, Meryl Streep, number 44, J.K. Rowling, number 31, Oprah Winfrey, number 24, and Steve Jobs, number 14. Now, I don't really know who compiled that list because I didn't recognize any of the names on the top 10. <laughs> and more importantly, the speech that Ellen Gener DeGeneres gave at Tulane uh, didn't even make the cut. So, you know, I thought, well, how, how credible could that list be? I know this speech won't make any top 100 list, but my thoughts were, if I could just provoke one thought that you otherwise might not have had, I would have accomplished what was intended. As I watched some of the speeches on YouTube, and began reading some of the list of memorable graduation quotes, I realized that there was one common thread. Each of the speakers or the authors of those speeches seemed to be sharing their formulas for their lives. If fame is a measure of success, then their formulas work for them. That's all well and good, but what if their formulas don't work for you? Each of you is a unique individual. You're in the midst of your own formula. Will it be balanced? Will it contain variables? Will it provide all the answers? As students of science and technology, I'm sure you know just how complex a chemistry or a calculus equation can be. I'm sure you've done a few of those, just like I have. If you've ever, ever had an incorrect answer, you know that one small change can cause a completely different outcome. Assuming most of you were born in the early 1990s, let me reminisce a bit about science and technology in that decade. In 1990, Microsoft introduced Windows 3.0. In 1993, the Pentium processor was invented. In 1994, Yahoo was invented, becoming the largest search engine of the time for the World Wide Web. In 1995, Amazon and eBay were invented so people could shop online. In 1995's Toy Story became the first computer fully animated movie. In 1999, BlackBerry introduced the first mobile device. Can you even imagine what your life would be like without that technology? Can you even begin to imagine what technology will be invented during your lifetime? For those of us that grew up watching Star Trek, and I'm sure that might be ahead of some of your time, Captain Kirk would walk onto the bridge of the Starship Enterprise and command, computer, what's the distance to Alpha Centauri? computer would answer correctly in however many million miles that might be. Who knew that in our lifetime we could ask Siri, what's the distance to the closest Mexican restaurant? And we'd get an accurate response out of our cell phone. To accommodate rapidly changing technology, you best be adaptable. I've been a healthcare professional for over 30 years in a leadership role for over 20. I've worked with nurses, physicians, medical technologists, biomedical engineers, pharmacists, housekeepers, anyone you might find working in an acute care setting in a hospital. If you ask any one of them, has healthcare changed during the course of your career? Their response would be an unequivocal yes. Just to give you a few examples. Then, when I was in college, I worked as a unit secretary in a large hospital. My job was to take the physician orders from the patient's chart and communicate to the nurse, the laboratory, or radiology. You know how I did this? I wrote on a four-part requisition that had carbon paper on it about the size of a parking ticket. Now, I know some of you probably don't even know what carbon paper is. Um, the result then was by the lab or whomever was written on that same little requisition and put back on the patient's chart for review by the physician. Sometimes that process took days. Now, all the orders are entered into a computer system where it's transmitted to the appropriate department. Once the diagnostic test is done, the results are electronically transmitted from the laboratory instrument or the x-ray equipment to where the results are immediately visible by the physician. It typically takes just minutes. Another then, when I was in medical technology school, we learned to draw blood from patients. We hand wrote the patient information on these blood collection tubes. I don't know if you've ever had to try to write on a round tube, but this was about the you know, size of a dime, 
It's not too easy. Now, when a patient arrives in the hospital, all of their demographic information is entered into the computer system. When a test is ordered, a barcoded label prints, it contains all the patient's information and the test that's ordered. The blood, the label goes on the blood when the blood's collected. The tube goes straight to the lab, goes into the instrument, and results immediately spit out, go up to the patient's medical record. Back then, patients' temperatures were obtained using a glass thermometer containing mercury. Remember holding that glass stick in your mouth for a couple of minutes and how uncomfortable it was, besides the fact that it contained mercury. Now, we get far more accurate temperatures by just swiping the forehead of a patient, just instantaneous. Then, nurses manually calculated the speed of infusion for IVs. Now, we have smart IV pumps that contain an electronic library of drugs. The nurse chooses the drug and the rate of infusion is automatically calculated. We, being Roan Medical Center, moved into a brand new building three months ago. Guess what changed? Everything. New equipment, new computers, new places to park, a new cafeteria. By the way, have I said everything changed? I invite you to walk through our new hospital. Ask a nurse over the age of 30 if they ever envisioned recording vital signs into a computer at the physician bedside. Ask a physician if they ever envisioned inner orderings from home. Some say while in their underwear, which is really more information than I want, but when they get called in the middle of the night. Ask a housekeeper if they were ever imagined if they would be notified electronically when a patient room was ready to be cleaned. Ask a patient if they ever envisioned being handed a restaurant pager to protect their, their privacy instead of calling their name. Ask a family member if they ever envisioned looking at a computer screen to track the progress of their loved one during surgery. So ask any of them, what's been the biggest challenge in the last three months? It's change. Managing those variables, managing the unknown. Those that have managed the ones are the most successful and the most happy. Change is an important variable in their formula. It's essential variable in their formula. So to the class of 2013, I say congratulations. But after the excitement and the celebrations are all over, I challenge you to ask yourself these questions. How does the variable of change fit into my life formula? Will I be someone that challenges myself or will I be content with the status quo? Will I be a lifelong learner or have I read my last textbook? Will the phrase, I don't know how, be in my vocabulary? Or will I be the person who says, let me show you? Will I learn to use that new software or will I think it's just too much trouble, I'm not gonna fool with it? You can control how the variables affect your formula for life. Don't let the variables control you. Make a habit of being ready for change. Make a habit of embracing change. Accept new technology, it's always coming. Managing the variables takes practice. Managing change takes practice. Make managing change part of your formula for life. Thank you. Gay, thank you so much for that. I tell you what, that's a, that's a great message, not only for our graduates, uh, but also I think I could learn something from that as well, for all of us to, to, uh, to embrace change and to make it a part of our, our, of our lives. Thank you so much. On behalf of Roan State students, I would now like to ask one of our graduating students, Ms. Michelle Edwards, to make a few remarks about the impact Roan State has had on her in obtaining her academic goals. Michelle is a civil engineering major from Rockwood, and she is the daughter of Michael and Linda Edwards. Michelle is a member of Phi Theta Kappa, the Honor Society, and a mathematics tutor in the Harriman Campus Learning Center. In her free time, Michelle enjoys traveling sports and spending time with friends and family. And Michelle, we are pleased to hear from you tonight. Would you come to the podium? Thank you. It is a great honor and privilege to be standing here before you today as the recipient of the 2012-2013 President's Award. I would like to thank the President's Committee for giving me the opportunity to speak before you today, as well as my professors, Dr. Larry Bolden, Jill Denton, Bill Murray, and John Rudolph for continuing to inspire and give me the skills needed to continue pursuing my education in engineering. 
A special thanks to my parents, Mike and Linda, and my sister Shelly, for the continual support you have provided throughout my college career thus far. I appreciate everything you do to make sure I have success in my future. God has truly blessed me in my life, and I would not be the person I am today or standing here right now without him. My journey here at Roan State has been an unforgettable experience that I would have never expected. I was the typical student entering college. I was not sure what career field I wanted to major in and had many decisions to make that would ultimately impact my future. As we have all discovered, the courses we have taken help determine our likes and dislikes and our strengths and weaknesses. I immediately obtained a passion for math and science and new engineering was the path I wanted to take. I have taken a great leap of faith and stepped out of my comfort zone to enter such a highly male-dominated field, at times encountering criticism for being a female pursuing this type of degree. As I went on, I gained self-confidence and began tutoring in these courses. Working in the Learning Center is one of the best decisions that enhanced my experience here because I have met many outstanding students and had the opportunity to work with the most unique and extraordinary group of individuals that have become very special to me. I am leaving around state with a lasting impression of unforgettable memories and lifelong connections with many people I have encountered. Perhaps each of you have your own similar experience. We may come from different backgrounds and have our own personal stories of success, but there is one common goal that we all share as we see the importance and personal benefits of a college education. Today, I would like to share some thoughts and words of encouragement with you. Take a moment to reflect on everything that you have achieved. Look back and appreciate just how far you have all come. This short amount of time may have been full of hard work and many hours of studying, but it has all paid off and led you to this moment that you have been waiting for. Remember the courage it took to remove the obstacles that stood in your way, and let this be the driving force to allow yourself to continue achievement. It does not matter how long it took you to reach this proud moment. What matters is you have accomplished the goals that you have set for yourself. Many of you have made the choice to continue your education here at Roan State Community College and find yourself here today at your graduation surrounded by family and friends. If you plan on continuing your higher education, remember to get involved and make the most of your college experience. If you plan on entering into the workforce upon graduation today, Take pride in all that you have learned, both academically and professionally. Continue to push yourself and strive to become the person you want to be. Dale Carnegie, an American writer and lecturer said, the person who goes furthest is generally the one who is willing to do and dare. This is a challenge that lies before you. Wherever life may take you, dare to be all that you can be. Dare to chase your chosen career and go the extra mile. Dare to persevere and be the best you can be, and then do it. Change will be inevitable. The next few days, weeks, and months will bring new horizons and challenges that must be faced. But I have a strong feeling that we all will become successful in our chosen fields. As we begin to embark on our next journey and this new chapter of our lives, may we never forget the hard work, dedication, and determination that enabled us to get to this point and we should all be proud of this accomplishment. Hold true to yourself and continue to leave an indelible legacy of excellent achievement for generations to come. I sincerely wish you all the best of luck in your chosen career paths. Thank you for this opportunity to speak today. Congratulations, class of 2013, on your remarkable accomplishments and future of great success. Michelle, thanks so much for your presentation and also for being an outstanding representative of Roan State Community College. We so much appreciate you. At this time, Mrs. Catherine Rhodes, our Interim Chief Academic Officer, will present the Student Awards. It is indeed an honor to stand here before you today and to announce the recipients of these degree-seeking students who have attended only Roan State Community College and will graduate summa cum laude 
having achieved a 4.0 college level grade point average. Would all of the recipients please remain standing until all of the names are announced. Christopher Lynn Brown. Morgan Nicole Henry. Tanisha Dawn Key. Sujong Lee. Roger Lyles. Dakota Sheeling Massingale. Daniel Joseph Mijay. Taylor Shannon Naramore. Rhonda Gail Palmer. J. Jeanette Phillips. Mark E. Picarella. Wendy Renee Picarella. Corey Hunter Reed. Christopher David Sherrard. Benjamin Lewis Shirley. Again, congratulations to all of those who are with us tonight. Thank you. I will now, now call Professor Pat Worth, President of the Roan State Faculty Senate, forward to present this year's Ben Rowe Award that recognizes the year's outstanding faculty members. Uh, before I present the Ben Rowe Award, I'd like to offer my congratulations to the graduates on behalf of all the faculty and the, I wanted to remind you that the way you feel today, what you have achieved in earning your degree, remember how that feels. Remember it when life gets hard, things are tough, and things are not quite so much fun anymore, that you can feel this way and you can achieve. And hold on to that feeling, okay? Keep it in your heart. It's a great one. Roan State's Benro Award is named in memory of a former teacher and principal, Sarah Ellen Benro. Ms. Benro was a teacher and school principal in Ohio and encouraged her children and others around her to strive for excellence. The award includes a $1,000 cash prize and a trip to Hawaii, okay, <laughs> to attend the Great Teacher Seminar. The award is sponsored by the Roan State Foundation. Edward C. Browder and Dr. and Mrs. John R. Sisk provided the initial Benro endowment. Mrs. Sisk is Sarah Ellen Benro's daughter. This recognition is made more prestigious by the fact that the winner is selected by his or her peers at the college. Now I'm gonna call uh, the three finalists for this award in alphabetical order, and it's my great privilege to present this award tonight. Casey Cobb, would you come forward? Casey became an assistant professor of history at Roan State in 2006. Roan State has offered him many avenues to pursue his talents over the ensuing years. For example, he organized a series of social and behavioral science forums beginning in 2008 on diverse topics such as immigration, race relations, the Holocaust, and honoring veterans of World War II. He also helped to found Roan State's International Education Program and has organized and led four history tours primarily to Normandy, France. Uh, being a history professor at Roan State Community College is his dream job, and he looks forward to many more years of service. In 2010, he married the most beautiful woman in the world, he says. He and his wife, Bobby, and son, Brock, live in Jacksboro. And our second finalist is Leisha Hill. Leisha is a native of Rome County and currently resides in Rockwood. She is married and the mother of two sons and one daughter-in-law. She is currently a registered respiratory therapist by the National Board of Respiratory Care. She is an alumni of Rome State Community College Respiratory Therapy Program 
She completed a BS degree from Tusculum College in 1991 and was employed at Methodist Medical Center in Oak Ridge for 15 years where she gained clinical experience <laughs> and served as the director of cardiopulmonary services. She later became the hospital's director of education until 1997 when she accepted the respiratory therapy program director position at RSCC, Alicia. Dr. Ralph Mundy <coughs> holds a BS in English education from the University of Tennessee an MA in English from the University of Tennessee and a doctoral degree in higher education leadership from North Central University, Prescott, Arizona. He began his career teaching middle school in Appalachia and then taught high school for a number of years in Georgia and Tennessee. He served as an adjunct at Roan State and Mississippi State Community Colleges and taught at Maryville College for one year. A favorite saying that he states for all his students is that education will not only change your life for the better, it will also change your children's lives. He has published a number of short stories, essays, and poetries, poetry over the years, sorry. His wife, Sandra, <coughs> is an RN at Rome Medical Center where she holds the position of infection preventative <laughs> safety director for the center. He has two sons, Logan and Landon. Logan lives in Nashville, and Landon is a senior at UT this fall, and he and his wife live and work in Rome County. And this year's winner is Congratulations again to each of the nominees and to Professor Casey Cobb for being selected by your peers as the Ben Rowe Award winner and uh, this year's Run State Community College Outstanding Faculty Member. It is time. Mrs. Rhodes, please prepare the class of 2013 for graduation. This is what we have all been waiting for, right? Will the candidates for the associate degree or certificate please rise? <laughs> President Whaley. These students have completed the requirements for the associate degree or certificate. On behalf of the faculty, it is my privilege to present them to you and to ask that you confer upon them the appropriate degree. Thank you. <clears throat> by the authority vested in me by the Tennessee Board of Regents and the State of Tennessee, I hereby confer upon you uh, in each of your respective groups, the Associate of Applied Science degree or the appropriate certificate with full privileges, honors, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. I will now invite you to please come forward to receive your degrees and certificates.
There you go. Associate of Applied Science in Nursing, Leslie A. Bean. <laughs> Associate of Applied Science in Nursing, Chelsea Oric Beats. <laughs> Chelsea Darlene Benson. Sarah Ashley Benson. Deborah G. Bowling. Ashley Noel Braden. Deborah Hooper Brady Magna Cum Laude. Beth Ann Thompson. Nikki C. Burden. Kristen Elizabeth Cable. Arminda Gail Carter. Karen Jeanette Cooper. Shannon Leanne Crawley Cum Laude. Sarah Aurelia Crisp. Eddie Cross. Tracy Diane Cruttenden. <laughs> Pam Elizabeth Cummings, cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Marie Curry. Crystal Gail Dickens. Jennifer Lynn England Cum Laude. Ashley Ann Epolito. Genevieve Sheila Flores. Hmm? Anna Eubanks Freedom Freeman Cum Laude. Patty Gabler. Nicolette Claire Gothard. Hey, 
Susan Diane Graham. Erica Paige Griffith. Crystal Dawn Hong. Christy K. Hicks, cum laude. James Tyler Irwin. Amanda Brooke Johnson. Eleanor Lori Johnson, cum laude. Rachel Andrea Jones. Madison Dane Kirkpatrick. Travis Wade Lance. Crystal Lynn Larimore, magna cum laude. Jeremy Michael Lovell. Shana Renee Martin, cum laude. Renee Denise Massoni. <laughs> Jennifer Lee Morris, cum laude. <laughs> Leanne M. Nugent. <laughs> Leanne Gail Painter. Amy Palmer, Miranda Chastain Raider, Nancy Marie Reynolds, Brandon Michael Sampsel. And he is also receiving an Associate of Applied Science, Allied Health Science. Aaron Teddy Stiegel. Rebecca Ashley Steiner. Bethany Anita Thompson. Sonia Lee Trent. Stacy Marie Trent. Mary Ann Marie Truman. William Clay Warren. Brittany Marie White. Heather Danielle Wilson. Jamie Ryan Wright. The following are receiving their Associate of Applied Science in Dental Hygiene Technology. Jessica Lynn Ankrum. <laughs> Hannah Valerie Cooch. 
cum laude. Heather Sue Heron, cum laude. Eliza Yuzan. What if I don't want to say that? Dakota Shailen Massengale, also receiving an Associate of Science in Summa Cum Laude. Marcia Marie Matt Madison. Emily Grace Scruggs, summa cum laude. Marna Fales Prado Witchman, summa cum laude. The following are receiving their degree in health information technology. Megan Renee Bowles, Cum laude. Maggie Darlene Courier, magna cum laude. Melissa Renee Dopp, magna cum laude. Heather Michelle Duggar, cum laude. <laughs> Ashley Roxanne Griffiths. <laughs> Valerie Don Hyde, magna cum laude. <laughs> Patricia Lynn Rasnick. Janet Lynn Roberson, magna cum laude. Misty Marlene Tinch, cum laude. Patricia Lynn White. The following are receiving their occupational therapy assistant degree. Richard Clyde Bensey, cum laude. Rhonda M. Brooks. Rachel Nicole Brown, magna cum laude. Carrie Louise Bryant. Sarah Michelle Clay, magna cum laude. Pamela Denise Eckert, cum laude. Amy K. Gross, magna cum laude. Emily Elizabeth Hatmaker. <laughs> Tiffany Ann Hahn, summa cum laude. Kimberly Diane House, cum laude. Joseph Douglas Hunt, cum laude. Miranda Danielle Longmire, summa cum laude. Emily Ann Morgan, cum laude. William Houston Murphy. Yeah. 
Denise Orr, summa cum laude. Gabrielle Ashan Raider. Cum laude. Robin Renee Scarborough, summa cum laude. Megan Kimber Tibbert, magna cum laude. The following are receiving their degree in opticianry. Courtney Luanna Backland. Sarah Elizabeth Donnan, magna cum laude. Jessica Mary Lynn Felty. Caitlin Elizabeth Gooch. Are you going to try to walk, really? Amanda Christine Harmon. <laughs> Elizabeth Hope Carlsvin. Kaylee Jo Lambert. <laughs> Megan Liberty Mason. Erin <laughs> Elizabeth Page. Ashley Danielle Phillips. Eric Ray Phipps. Christina Denise Terry. The following are receiving their phys physical therapist assistant degree. Andrea Bonanno Beeler. Robert Dale Benedict, cum laude. <laughs> Not gonna say Lauren Ashley Copeland. Summa cum laude. Easy there. Miranda Nicole Franklin. Cum laude. Last name. Cynthia Odeline Godsey. Summa cum laude. Better Honasek, magna cum laude. I murdered that one. Inso. David Jeremiah Inso, magna cum laude. Daryl Joseph Jenkins, summa cum laude. Megan Maria Marshall, summa cum laude. Christina Rachel McNeely.
Suzanne Moran Eibel, summa cum laude. Maybe. Michael Brett Steinmetz, magna cum laude. Kimberly Ann Wilson, summa cum laude. The following are receiving their degree in radiologic technology. Jordan Lynn Atkins, cum laude. William Michael Bales, cum laude. Tasha Lee Boyd, summa cum laude. Darcy Rose Chitwood, cum laude. Brandon Scott Cooper, cum laude. So tempting. Paige Marie Deo, magna cum laude. Courtney Nichelle Evans, magna cum laude. Mindy J. Forrester, magna cum laude. Stacy Lynette Galloway. Gabriel Garcia. Yeah. <laughs> what happens when you forget your card? Andrea Lynn Hall, magna cum laude. Get over here. Oh, no. James E. Heaton, summa cum laude. April B. Helland, summa cum laude. Erica Hernandez, cum laude. Daniel Wayne Hurst, cum laude. Christopher Glenn. Jude, cum laude. Paul Roger Coger. Brittany L. Mix, summa cum laude. Bethany Danielle Price, magna cum laude. Joshua Brandon Salter, magna cum laude. Sarah Marie Simpson, summa cum laude. Billy Joe Stamper, cum laude. Are you in the Navy now? Okay. Anthony Re Rene Ryan Stennett, summa cum laude. He's also a U.S. Navy veteran. Brandy. Rochelle Sweet, magna cum laude. The following are receiving their degree in respiratory therapy technology. Easy. Alicia Brooke Bergen.
Rachel Leanne Kerb, cum laude. Rebecca Lee Matheson. Jeffrey Lynn Miller. Brooke Nicole Sami. Amanda Renee Smith. Mara Elizabeth Walker. Jennifer Lynn Wilkins. Jennifer Renee Wood. The following graduates are receiving their certificates in diagnosis and procedural coding. Nikita Bree and Carol. The following are receiving their certificate in massage therapy. Diana Faye Christmas also receiving also receiving her Associate of Applied Science in Allied Health Sciences. John Lorn Diamond also receiving his Applied Science degree in Allied Health Science and Geographic Information Systems, magna cum laude. William Eugene Harrison, also receiving his Associate of Applied Science in Allied Health Science. Patrick Renee, or Patrick Ryan Hickey. <laughs> Haley Lynn Leach. <laughs> Rebecca Tara Owens. Cornelia Quimby. Kaima K. Smith, also receiving her Associate of Applied Science in Allied Health Science. Tony Robert Stewart. Holly Nicole Stone. April Nicole Waller, also receiving her Associate of Applied Science in Allied Health Sciences. The following are receiving their certificate in medical transcription. Karen Lynn Robbins. Rachel Janelle Wilson. The following are receiving their certificate in pharmacy technician. Brandilyn Leanne Fields, also receiving her Associate of Applied Science in Allied Health Science, cum laude. Amy Alicia Seals, also receiving her Associate of Applied Science in Allied Health Science. Ashley Regan Sorrells. Rudolph Carl Stotes II. Kelsey Reed Thornton. The following are receiving their certificate in polysomnography. Kayla Marie Blankenship. Mandy Pratt Coker. Barton Cooper Gregg. Malia Jane Hayes.
Deborah Lee Jones. Keith Landon Roberts. Michael Ray Shipley. And our last and finest graduate, Kayla Ray West. Now, one more time with the audience, please join me in congratulating the graduates of the class of 2013. That, that is outstanding. We, we cannot end this evening without recognizing that each student here has achieved a significant milestone in their lives, but as with any accomplishment, you've not done it alone. I expect that none of the graduates who have received their respective degrees or certificates tonight have done so without the support of their family and friends. So, if you have played any role as a family member, friend, if you've offered a word of encouragement or helped in any way to make it possible for these students to become our graduating class of 2013, would you please stand, and graduates, would you please join me in thanking them for their support. Thank you so much. Our faculty have challenged, and I do emphasize challenged, our graduates and helped it make them possible for them to learn and to expand their educational horizons. So graduates, would you now please join me in thanking these faculty members for all they have done. I would like to once again thank, <laughs> thank our faculty and staff who have worked so diligently to make this evening possible, including the graduation committee, which was so ably chaired by Mr. Robert Benson, our Director of Library Services. Thank you. One more time, graduates, congratulations to you, and now it is my distinct privilege to say you may move your tassels to the left. This now concludes the graduation ceremony. We so appreciate your attendance. Please stand as the stage party, the faculty, and the graduates exit the floor, and please be aware and join us that we will have refreshments served in the student lounge immediately following the ceremony. Thank you so much. <laughs>